Bloody Slide, RoadWarriorTraining.com. Welcome to the Road Warrior Channel. Today is part two of the Aikido Past, Present, and Future Yubidori Techniques. Um, in the last video, I kind of might have threw you guys off a little bit by not showing you anything from the traditional side. Like I said at the end of that video, if you watched it, I have never seen any techniques with Yubidori from the Aikikai style of Aikido, Iwama style, or Key Society, Yoshinkan. I've never seen anything done with Yubidori. The Tenshin Aikido methodology is the only form of Aikido that I've ever seen finger techniques, finger locking, finger grabbing applications, throws, things like that. Um, I haven't seen it anywhere else. You know, if any of you guys out there have seen Yubidori from the Aikikai side, please share the video with me. You know, put it in the comments below, click a link in there, and then I'll be more than happy to take a look at it. But from the 16 plus years of doing traditional Aikido, I was never formally taught on how to do any Yubidori techniques, and uh, I don't think you have either. So, it's, uh, from my standpoint, that's why the video was, I was, it was kind of like a joke, but it wasn't a joke. It was pretty much to let you guys know that there was no techniques that, that I've been formally taught on Yubidori. But there's a lot with tension Aikido, and we're going to show you a handful of them today. So I have Bob and Rod with me here today. Hi. So the first technique that we're going to show you, hi, Bob. Um, from a katadori standpoint, okay, so he goes to grab from katadori. As that happens, there's a, you know, a multi in ra, so to the front and to the rear of doing this. So as he goes and grabs, so from the multi side, you're grabbing the yubidori. Now remember, yubidori is really specific on how you actually do this. If you're grabbing the hand, he can close his hand on my hand, right? Now you've got a, a power struggle going on here. You're not going to be able to apply this. You almost, you have to catch the hand as it's coming into attack. And you can't be like this and it's coming in and you're doing that because obviously the projection is there. That's a little bit over compliant with your partner. You want this movement to where it comes out and you grab right away. Two fingers, three fingers best. If you grab one and you apply this abruptly, you're probably going to get a broken finger out of this or your partner's going to get a broken finger out of this. Two fingers is a better controlling aspect. Three fingers is pretty much the ultimate grip that you want to be able to get is three fingers. There's also a key thing with this. It's not just grabbing the fingers like so and applying you do you do You want to actually crush the knuckles together like this as you do that. And the other thing too is to make you do pretty effective, it's not doing that and it's not doing that. Okay? It's fingers to basically the bicep and at the same time, you're creating this small circle here right on the top of his knuckles. So your pinky is very important. It's not the other way around. Your pinky is very important with this because it's taking up slack in this movement here. As you do this, you're creating a circle here. So you're pushing and pulling at the same time to apply this. And then this normally goes, please him, this normally goes to the bicep. If you do it this way, it's different. See, Bob can start moving. If it's this way, it totally benefits him. Doing it here and straight down, pushing and pulling with this motion here to the bicep, you get that application right away. Okay? Then from here, with the technique that we're going to show is a hiji nage. So once you have that, you don't release the fingers. You still keep this pressure. You get him to come back up and you attack the elbow. Push the elbow in and then throw him into a forward roll. Okay? You can get a break fall out of this from a tension aikido's perspective. The problem with Yubidori is that these are pretty sensitive techniques to the point where you clamp down on somebody's hand and fingers um, if the response isn't there, if they don't have cat-like reflexes, uh, for a lack of better words. The ukemi is going to be kind of like two steps behind. The hand's going to be already in front of them and the ukemi has to basically catch up and that's when the potential for injury happens. So you have to be very careful of that. So when Katadori happens, you know, you come in, grab. Then from there, you're moving, and then you're throwing, okay? Good posture, good spinal alignment. You're straight up and down. You're not doing this. You're not doing this, and then doing this. You want good posture movement as you do that. The forward projection, okay? When you finish, you don't want to be doing stuff like, you know, throwing people leaning back. 
you want to be able to throw someone forward. So not even from the finger grab position, but from this, you don't want to be doing this. You want to be thinking forward. You want to force him into the roll. And if you see how, how Bob Zucchemi is, that if I'm pushing this in, right, this looks very similar to called the Geish movement, Shihonage movement, Sumiatosh, once, once the throw starts happening, Kokunage, okay? Tenkan, it's all that same movement. It's all that same body mechanic. Okay, so you're gonna to want to do that so with the katadori, you're coming in grabbing, and as you're applying, this is also important, once you have the fingers too, you can't push on the elbow to the outside and expect this to happen. Applying yubidori, use this as a lever, like a gear shifter. Turn it towards you at that point. It's still, here's his bicep, it's still pointing towards his bicep, but it's making his elbow go in. Then from there, then it's, and it's not this way. It's not knuckles up. It's palm up and thumb, and then push that into his center and throw. He has no choice. The slack is taken up, so he's going to have to fall. Okay, so from that's the emolte. So one more. So from the emolte side, from here, moving in, that's the emolte side. The ura side, if you're late and you have to basically ten con from this, as this happens, you could base. Oh, sorry, one more time. From here, you can capture it from here. Now you're almost in that position to where you're going this way, to where you tend to. Okay? You almost have them in that position already. So once you're doing this, notice how I said, not knuckles up, thumb. So palm up. Then from here, you're going to turn and keep applying it. So the emolte version is really the, the version that you want from this. I'm just showing you the raw version so you can see how that would work. If you did it, if you move this way and apply, that's the raw version that you're going to want. One more time. So from here, this comes up, takes center, capture the fingers as you tenkan, then push. Okay? One more. So from here, that's the raw version that you're going to want. If you do it the other way, it's going to feel kind of, you're going to feel kind of off. Okay? The next technique that you're going to want to try to do same attack, so from cut, so from, uh, can we do it off that side, Yubidori? So from Katadori here, you can try to grab, get the application here. Remember, you always have that other hand that you want to watch out for, okay? So you could move forward. This hand is, you want to take center with this too. So you're taking center, then capturing. If you just grab from here, here, boom, here comes the punch. So you... And a lot of you guys might go, well, why would you turn into him if you're doing this? He can still hit you. Well, that's the, that's the beauty behind the Yubidori, because once you have the Yubidori apply at this point, he's not going to hit you. He's going to have to move, just like how he just did with that technique. If he doesn't move, you know, he's going to sustain an injury. Um, the next video for this would be the combative concept side. That's when you're going to see a lot of fun with how we'd apply this in a real-world application, without the hakama on, the gi on, different mindset. Same principles, but different mindset. Shorter technique. So when the katadori comes in, you want to make sure you capture that center. Okay? It's important. Capture the center, then fingers at that point. You okay? <laughs> it slipped on the hakama. Then you can throw. Okay? Same set again. So you're capturing this at this point. Then you're moving to the outside and throwing. So now you're getting this yubidori from here, moving in this way. So before, it was here, this way. Now it's here. So that same application, small circle, crush the fingers to the bicep, and you're bringing this back and you're throwing this straight down. Protect your face, whatever you want to do. Little things like don't do this with so the katadori comes in and you're grabbing here and then your hand is out here or your hand is scratching your ass or whatever. Still have some life with this hand where you're actually applying this to your face. Same thing, always forward projected movement. Don't try to do yubidori this way because it's not gonna, you're, you're leaning back. You're not gonna feel that forward progressive power. 
is we straight down and move into this. Okay? But still, the key points, crushing the fingers, applying the small circle against the knuckles, fingers going to the bicep, not outside, not inside. This is the controlling aspect of it. This stuff works if you do it the right way. So again, so from katadori, you can capture center this way, okay? Then from there, your uke has to be in tune with this. If your uke starts flying off to the side, okay, that's where this technique would come into play, where you'd have this. That's where that would work really well. You want to be able to apply this move tenkan by using the gear shifter of the hand and then throw the technique. Okay, so from the inside perspective, so from here, center, apply, and then that's where you'd have yubidori. The other version of this, where, same side, from here, you can capture it this way. Remember, this isn't the threat, that's the threat, his other hand. So, so as he does this, boom, you have yubidori, then from there you can just move this right into position. Still applying all principles, fingers, the whole nine yards, pushing the fingers into the bicep. The other way you can do this from here is ten conning to the outside. I tend to like to put my hand here because this is like trying to catch a fly out of midair and be able to do that. That's going to be difficult to do. So you kind of set them up with that cut, that cut dirty grab, boom, you move, and then you throw. We're trying to do this medium speed to slow speed because these techniques are fast and it doesn't take much to get injured off of a yubidori if you have an overzealous nage. So one more time, so from katadori, from here, capture, hand can help you with this, tenkan, controlling the whole body with the fingers and as it's coming around, I'm still applying this to the elbow, straight down to the ground and throw. One more time, same side. So capture, throw. One more. Capture, throw. Okay? So that's off of katadori. Um, another katadori variation from this would be hiji shime. Right into hiji shime. Okay? This elbow lock. Shime means to strangle, so you're strangling the arm. At this point, this has to turn for yubidori, this transition. Then come up and then throw. The end is very similar to the last technique. Same side. So this almost looks like an ukenagashi, right? So if he just attack ukenagashi, right? It's not grab off to the side. It's almost like an ukenagashi from underneath. Shime. Then you have to look at where Bob is in placement to me. Extend the leg out a little bit. This way, this way, this way, this way. So if I try to move, I'm getting tripped. So once you have the Hijishime, you have to move around this. Okay? Turn your body. So you have to move around this. Obviously, stay connected at that point. You can lift him up and then you can throw. Okay? So one more. Capture this. So obviously, if I don't capture this, this is going right for my face. So if you're late, oh, you got ago ski. Okay? So you have to move through this, get the hiji shime. This transition is kind of weird. People, oh, shit, how do I do this? You know, this mess, this gets messed up. So once you have this, this has to rotate out to where you have that yubidori right away. So from here, this rotates. See that nice smooth movement? Rotates. Let me get three fingers on you. Rotates. From here, rotates. Then from here, you could use this to get him to come back up, and then you can throw at that point. So, so last one on this. See how Bob's doing this with his hands? Because it starts to put wear and tear on your hands, you're gonna have a problem. This starts to get a little tight. So one more, so from Katadori, right from here, Ijishime, throw. Okay? So you see how that technique works. Another technique that you can do at this point, um, Kosudori. So Kosudori Nikyo, boom. 
This hand, remember, knee kill. It's not pushing down. You have to be able to do this with your hand with knee kill. This is like what we talked about in one of the Kite Tanagi videos. This is that shock technique. Wait! Then this has to roll out. Get your Ubidori. You can't do this right in front. He can kick me. I mean, obviously, I can apply this. If he allows this to bend, here comes the hammer. Bam! I get hit. So you want to be able to apply this Ubidori at this point. Then it's not trying to do this to throw. You're moving by turning the fingers that way. Not a lot, but you're moving this way as you throw. Okay? Try the other side. So, also you have to move before you're grabbed. If this just happens right here, and Bob has one hell of a grip, this is good, good one time. This is gonna, you know, this is gonna be hard. So Aikido is all about blending, accepting somebody else's momentum, their energy, taking that and use it against them. So the idea with this too is you want to move before he actually finally grabs. Then your Ubidori gets applied. Key things to see how this works, are you okay? Key things to see how this works. Same way in the inverted position from here, same application, small circle, it's not just doing that, you're pulling. See how I'm pulling and pushing? I'm pushing by rolling my hand, top of my hand up to match his. So you want this to happen. His shoulder will start to get to affected, start being affected by technique, and then he also comes up on his toes. Then from there, you're moving in and you're throwing. You're not releasing, you're not giving any slack on the Ubidori. Keep that serious and seriously in mind. If you start to release on the slack, that's when this flexor turns around and does a Kaishi Waza technique on you, which is a reversal. And this man has a plethora of reversals. So if you give him the least bit of slack and technique, or you disengage on the Yubidori, or any technique for that matter, Sankyo, Nikyo, Kotagaishi, whatever, if you disengage that lock by releasing in the least amount, he will take the opportunity, I will take the opportunity. Most of my senior students will take the opportunity and will reverse the technique on you. So don't ever take up the slack on a Kotagaishi, on a Nikyo, I mean, obviously this type of Nikyo, because it's, it's basically a shock technique, boom, then you move. But when you're actually applying Nikyo, you don't release until you're gonna pin or whatever. Same thing with Sankyo, Kotagaishi, never do it for Shihonage, you know, Yubidori, you don't wanna take, take up the slack, but you don't ever wanna release it. Training, yes, you do not wanna beat up your partners. Always have kindness, compassion, honesty, and integrity when you're training with your people, with your, with your fellow Aikidoka, so no one's getting hurt, because then you guys can continue to train. And then once you build a rapport with your students or your training partner, through the course of time through training, then you guys can beat the shit out of each other because you guys will know you'll be able to take it. No one's going to get hurt. Plus, that common bond that we have, that rapport that we have, he knows that I'm not deliberately trying to hurt him and he's not deliberately trying to hurt me. This is just fun training. Back in the day when Bob and I used to train together before I actually became a sensei at the Chicago Ike guy, we used to beat the shit out of each other. There were other people that wanted to train with us in class and we never let anybody. He can be taking uke for Kevin Chote Sensei and be in the center of the room demonstrating and I'd be sitting in Seiza and the Sensei that Chote Sensei said, hi, go ahead. I would jump up like a jackrabbit, get in front of him. Hey, Oni some people like, Jesus, when, when am I ever gonna be able to train with this guy? Never, never, you know. We had a really serious connection with technique and that's why we've, we've evolved the way that we did. You know, we had that that common bond, that common denominator of we want to get good at this to training serious. You can beat on me, I'm gonna beat the shit of you on you, and neither one of us ever got butt hurt about it or you know, injuries happen, we've both been injured, but we we both worked through it. We sustained the pain and we went through it, you know. It's just the way how it goes with you know, mindsets in Aikido are much different than other martial arts systems. A lot of the Aikido training is, you know, love, peace, and harmony and stuff. We get that, we totally get that. The only way you get love, peace, and harmony is through violence. I'm sorry, but that's just the truth when it comes to it. When it comes to Aikido training, it's beautiful violence. That's the way how we look at it, okay? So again, um, technique we're doing, uh, Kitaka Dori. So, or Kosui. So this Nikyo application, remember, get off the line, Nikyo, fly the Yubi Dori. This is the important part. Here, you're rolling your hand this, rolling the hand to get this Yubidori, 
Then from there, you're moving forward, you're throwing. Okay? I'll switch left side. So that's what we just did, right? Yeah, we just did left side, sorry, right side. So from here, move off the side, you feel. You be right at this point. Then you're moving in, throwing. Okay? Pretty easy. One more time, left side. So from here, move through, hit, throw. Okay? Notice I kind of lost my footing a little bit there. That happens when you start to move quick. So that's Kosodori Nikyo into Yubidori into Yubinage. The next technique, this can be done off of Katadori, it can be done off of Katate Dori. This is kind of like, kind of like a magic trick in a sense. You heard of Yubidori, right? Yubi fingers. Oya Yubidori, prominent finger, which is your thumb. So from Katate Dori, you're capturing the thumb. At that point, you can capture the thumb. You can apply this throw if you'd like from the previous technique that we did in the beginning, or you can move Tenkan and get the same application, similar, I think, the second or third technique that we demonstrated. So again, from here, you're not gonna let him grab you, okay? The big thing too is you wanna be able to capture the thumb, but as you capture the thumb, if his momentum, if he has honest attack, his momentum's coming. So if that's the case and he comes through here, he's gonna run right into me or that thumb's gonna get broke. So you're gonna kinda wanna shift from side to side to get, a, get out of the way of the freight train. Because when this guy's coming, or if you have a good, a good uke that gives you honest tech, they're gonna be coming and it's gonna be hard to stop on a dime when you're grabbing the thumb. The thumb is gonna give before the body gives. So you gotta be really careful that when you're applying this right away, you're applying, but then you're also getting out of the way. Or you're getting out of the way and applying. Okay, same side one more time. So you're getting out of the way of this. As you're one more sorry. Okay. So move. Move. And you can hear Bobby's, you know, making these little key eye sounds. That's an indication to me that it's not that he's you know, hey, hey, you know, this is kind of a little bit of an indication that it's tight. The slack isn't there. You know, I'm not giving him slack, it's taken up. So it's almost like kind of a little verbal command of, dude, it's working. Not, dude, you're breaking my thumb, but this type of ukemi, you have to, you have to move fast. If you don't move fast, like I said, there's uh, the potential for injury. So another thing that you can do from here is, uh, uh, kosodo, uh, yeah, kosodo again, kosodo nikyo. From here, you can do nikyo, roll this over, you can grab the thumb, or you can roll this over to the point where you get yubidori this way, to so have this yubidori, then you can capture the thumb. So, th th this isn't engraved in stone that you have to stay here. You could actually grab the thumb if you want, then move from here into koltagaishi, throw koltagaishi. Okay. The beautiful thing about Tenshin Aikido with what we do is that you can go from one transition to the next transition to the next transition to the next transition opposed to being stuck to where it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to go here. There's no rules in Tenshin Aikido when it comes to applying Yubidori, Nikyo Sankyo, whatever, Kolta Gaishi. You know, if you feel that you need to switch it up into a Hen Kowaza from going from one technique to the next, by all means, go for it. So you have Nikyo, right? Nikyo, you're moving into this Yubidori. Then at this point, it's like, let's just say for the sake of conversation here, there's a wall. There's not enough room for me to throw him this way. So now from here, I'm like, oh, shit. Sorry, dude, I'd love to throw him in the wall, but I'm not gonna. Now you can grab this Yubidori, bring him down to the ground, and then there's the Koltagaishi. So you can throw the Koltagaishi into that, okay? So done a little bit quicker to where it's <coughs> Yubidori, bum, and you can throw. Okay? So you have that combination as well. Um, hey, arigato. Rod, hey, arigashimasu. This is another form that you can do. Hey, so we were showing Kosodori, cross hand grab. Kosodori Nikyo, right? Now, katate dori. So, katate dori nikyo, you're playing nikyo. Then from here, peel off the fingers. Now you have this yubi dori, right? 
So from here, you can move to the outside, get in this position, take the ukemi. Now when you're doing this and you're covering, your uke, as I'm applying this, you don't want this hand flailing up in the air or anything. That You want it somewhat close to your body to where you can take proper ukemi. So he takes a proper fall, takes the roll, he gets back up. Right, so one more time. So, katate dori, nikyo, roll this out, yubidori at this point. From here, a little bit quicker, Kevin, I'm not gonna ten count. From here, you just move this way and turn right into that, and then you have your Kevin on that as well, and technique. So, move, nikyo, roll out, ten count. Nikyo, roll out, move in, and throw. So there's another variation. The last technique that we're going to demonstrate for you is the harder technique with this. So I'm going to show it to you with Rod from a slow perspective, and then I'm going to transfer over to Bob so you can see a little bit faster. So from Katate Dori, you move, apply the Nikyo, right? Get the Yubi Dori at that point. From here, you're not moving into him to do this. You bring him to you. As that happens, he puts his feet together, and then you see the minage. Okay, other side. So, Nikyo, Yubidori. Then at that point, Rod would start to stand up. See, this is where you give this, this is that technique where now you're gonna release the slack. If you keep the slack, you can't do it minage. So you shock him, boom, then he stands up because he's thinking I'm still coming to get you. Then as that's happening, you get the Yuminaga. So you actually kind of sucker him in right into the throw. Okay, one more time. So, Nikyo, Yubidori, then from there, there's the throw. Okay, one more. So, Nikyo, Yubidori, ah, there's the throw. So they got a little misconstrued there. Come back over. Watch your chemi on this. Go a little slower. So there's the Nikyo. Here's the Yubi Dori. Okay? From this point, you're thinking attack, but you're not pushing so much into me. You know what I'm saying? Because this can get ugly. So at this point, once I shock him down, he comes up. Then there's the throw. Okay? Hi. So from a little bit faster your uh from this side. The follow through from here, boom, same technique. Then at this point, you're not reaching, but it's down, coming up, and there's the throw. Okay? Same side, please. So a little bit quicker. Nikyo, you can do it. There's the throw. Okay, from the other side, so it's just second that full eating minami. One last time, let's go to the same side. So from here, thank you, eating minami. Okay, see how the response is different? So what, the, what I'm feeling from Bob when Bob comes into attack, I'm feeling like I got a dump truck coming at me. There's power, you know what I'm saying? It's 210 pounds or 200 whatever he is of mass trying to run me over. So from this, from uh, so from Katategori, this application is quick. He's not going to fuck around. He's going to get up. So when I apply this Nikyo, boom, I have to move quick to get into this. And with his weight coming, if I'm thrown off in any way, shape, or form to where I'm here and he's still coming at me, here's this collision. There's reversal with this man. He knows how to do this stuff. If I don't get this in the right spot, if my timing's off, see, I got trouble going on here at this point. Then whatever happens from there. So you have to make sure that your technique, boom, you're already in position. Boom. Okay. The last technique that we're going to do, I thought that was the last one. We're just going to show you one last one. So I believe this was from Kosadori. So from Kosadori, so from Kosadori, Nikyo, into Yubidori at this point, you can get into Hijishime, 
Kubi Shime at that point, dump them on the ground, then you have this pin. What I'm looking for is from Katate Dori, okay, Nikyo into Yubi Dori, flip this over into Sankyo, okay? So from Katate Dori, Nikyo, right, into Yubi Dori. Then from here, it's rolls. But you want to be careful because this guy's slick and so are some other people. You do this, boom, there comes the elbow. So this has to drop and then you use this momentum of turning right into the Sankyo, okay? Then from there, you could, in a plethora of things you can do. From here, you can lock this up. A lot of traditional people do this. Turning, we use this as kind of like a little lever to apply. And from here, you can do a sword cut, like a case of giddy, a diagonal sword cut. I'm not gonna do this hard because this is kind of like a whiplash effect. This will definitely affect your shoulder. You lift this up and you cut this straight down into this pin. Then you get into a standing pin. Notice how I didn't show a lot of pins with that because you don't really see a lot of pins with the Ubi Dory technique. They all can be applied and cut down to where you can do pins. Right now we're just showing you the throwing technique aspect of this. So from Katate Dori Nikyo, Nikyo into Yubi Dori, okay, from here you're off to that side. You're in that basically in that angle position and roll this over in a Sankyo. From here you have the sword cut you can throw. You can take a step back and throw him this way. So to show what that would look like. So from here, you have that Sankyo movement. Then from here, you're throwing back into a throw. Or you can do the Tate Dori Nikyo into Sankyo. Then from there, pull down on the elbow. The hand goes across the face. It doesn't go up and over. It goes up and over, Bob reverses technique into Ikyo. Okay, so this goes across his face, and you can just throw straight on the ground, then you're gonna to want to step on his gi so he can't get back up, or you can throw this into a shiho nage variant, to where you have, and if you step on his foot, there's a lot of this going on too, that I didn't really go into, because that's like a whole nother video. Applying the Sankyo, so you're stopping him from escaping, you pull this over, and you can throw him at this point. You can either let him roll, or you can throw him into a break fall. I'm sure you've seen me throw Chris into that countless numbers of times. So, um, this can also be done off of kata. So from kata dori, you can take the hand this way as well, apply, flip over with the sankyo. There's a sankyo application, and then go right into that throw. Or you can do it right from here, kibidori, sankyo, so, there you have it, folks. So we probably got about 30 some odd minutes in the Yubi Dory. You'd say that's probably what, not even scratching the surface of all the possibilities. It's infinite number of possibilities, one tension Aikido instructor said to me one day. So there's a lot of other variants that you can do. We just wanted to give you a nice lick, not a taste, but a big, nice, fat lick of what you can do with Yubidori. There's a ton, a ton of options. So, that's it for us today. This was your uh, Tension Aikido Yubidori video. Please like, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, share the video, check us out at www.roadwarriorstraining.com. Sign up for our online Tension Aikido classes. Um, we've got some big announcements coming up, one that we just pretty much uh, finalized on. That's going to be uh, a nice, really nice thing that's going on first couple months of next year. we got a couple big events that are coming up in the first couple months of uh, 2017. That's pretty much about it. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time on the Rogue Warrior Channel. Bye.